All right, uh, hi, how are you doing? Uh, we're here today with John Buckwalder in Paisley, is that there? Paisley, Florida. Yeah. Paisley, Florida. And we're on our way back from the meet, you know, so we thought we'd stop up. Uh, John is uh, above Orlando, It's basically where we're at. And uh, we stopped primarily to see his plasma cutter. You built this yourself, right, John? Yes, yes, this is completely homemade. Your own design? Yes. Okay, from, you got other, uh, saw other units and kind of, did what they did and did yes. your own way and yes. and so on. Now the electronics are readily available on uh, online. There's several companies that, that make uh, the electronics packages for for this table, and it uses a standard PC computer uh, using uh, Windows XP as the uh, main controller, and then there are other electronics uh, package uh, suppliers. Well, there's, there's X, Y, and Z axis. But one, how many motors are you running? One motor to do the Z? Yes. Yes, the Z is controlled by this little stepper motor here. Oh, I, I meant the, the, which one am I talking about? The right. Y. The Y is right. used. The Y uses one motor right here. Okay. And it drives through a belt uh, that is connected to a drive shaft that goes I clear see the, I see across it the entire machine. It's inside the gantry. That's right. And then it is driving uh, the rack and pinion and the pinion is connected on that common shaft there. So that means that each side of the gantry moves exactly the same dimension mm -hmm. uh, as, as the other side. Now, I was going to do mine with two separate motors. Mm -hmm. that, I, I see a lot of people doing that, so right. I don't know. That's uh, good, too. Well, uh, some of your software, of course, uh, is designed to run multiple motors. Uh, and in that particular case, uh, there's still no a way to prevent one of the motors from missing a step uh, pulse, uh, which actually moves it along. And I have never had a problem with this particular setup with these 425 uh, motors. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I would see no real reason to go to a, a an 800, for example. Uh, it's just not required. Uh, but if you did, what would it mean? Would it mean any difference in the way well, it operated? No, the operation would be identical, but it would require a larger power supply. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and it would require, in this particular case, uh, this unit uses Gecko drives, which is a very, very reliable step motor controller. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, they are capable of, this particular unit is capable of handling the power you'd need for the motor. Uh, okay. So you, if you wanted to change, if you felt the motor wasn't large enough, you could change it because the NEMA 34, they right. have them up to 1600? Yes, right. Size. Right. You could I have seen commercially use the uh, sheet metal uh, bars in place here, and they wave back and forth uh, as they go. If you, if you can see how they're curved mm -hmm. as they're put in. And that serves the purpose if you're cutting a straight line. That you won't cut that, through That you won't cut that particular one the whole length. Of, of yeah, you replace them. You Those to. are replaceable, consumable. Type I guess you can make them with the machine. Uh, that would be probably less less desirable to do that because number one, they need to go the entire length of the table. Oh yeah, yeah. And the table can't cut the entire length. Right, right. Uh, so it, it, typically, I would go to a, to a sheet metal shop and have them shear them off to the exact same dimensions. And uh, what about the slots? But they're like eight created together, right? Yes, they are, those are cut into the bars and the table so that they drop right down into it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so they're easy to replace. Now I notice you use tubing here for your main right. rails. Yes. And what I've been reading is that how do you get this square? How do you get these flat? You know, like a, well, as opposed to using like uh, eighty twenty of the aluminum extrusions. Right. Okay. Uh, in this particular case, uh, structural steel tubing is pretty close. Uh, flat. Yeah, flat. And uh, so consequently, I had no trouble aligning uh, the, the rail here for the, for the uh, linear bearing on the side here. And the same thing with the, the uh, rack for the rack and pinion drive. You didn't have to shim it or anything? No, there was no shims required. It went right to I was going to use a ball screw. I have them. I yeah. Really. Right. Any reason why you went to the rack versus the ball screw? Well, the rack was far cheaper than a ball oh, screw. Yeah, so, I think I got like uh, yeah fifteen hundred dollars in the yeah. 
and, uh, and of course I'm using uh, the linear rail here to support TK, the gantry. THK. Yes. Uh, and this is a fairly heavy mm -hmm. uh, duty rail. Mm -hmm. Then you got, you got linear right. round bars here right. like the Thompson ball bushing That's style. That's correct. That's correct. Now you can put a router right on here. You take this yes. unit just, off just unbolt these four and put the router there, right on there. The router right on there. And, uh, and now it's, uh, you plug the router in over here. What do you have for, what, how much stroke you have this This, this has got uh, six inches of stroke. Right. So you have to have six inches from the bottom of this under, don't you? Well. <laughs> if you're going to cut a piece six inches thick. Right. <clears throat> but the problem with cutting something six inches thick is, number one, you've got to have a cutter that will reach down six inches. Oh, yeah. Okay. And well, most, most routers are set up for half inch drive right and uh, so if you can find a cutter that's four inches long uh, that's about the biggest you're going to be able to cut anyways so mm -hmm. having but if you were cutting something that was this thick and you wanted to cut the top part of it yes you need to be able to go under that is correct over the would, top of and, it and, and and again when I built this this particular uh, uh, Z drive was an integrated unit. It already had all the linear. Oh yeah, I see that. So yeah. mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't make this. This was a right. commercial. And you did drive. just adapt it. I see you got a shim just, in here to right. square it up, right? Yes. Uh, and, and I also see you have the reduction on this part. That's correct. Yeah. Why was that? That moved too fast for you? Right. This, of course, this is the motion uh, in the X. X axis. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah. Now, do you think if you got the right motors, you could actually do some milling with this? No. Not strong enough. No. They, Even they, if you put a head. No, it, 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 you could not get this rigid enough uh, with this light steel uh, to do. Now you can mill aluminum. With yeah. It. Let's say, for example, I wanted to make passenger car sides, and you saw me do that on the yeah. video where I used right. the router. Okay. Well, I'm the CNC of the router, so now mm -hmm. we're going to use it on this. That would do that, right? Yes. And what about drilling the holes? You think you can drill, drill the holes? holes too? No problem there. And you can use a but, spray mist or something on to keep the drill cool, I yes. guess? Yes, yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And um, now you're using Mach 3. Yes. And you only have just an ordinary old, I see you have a compact old old yes. computer. It's an old, it's an old uh, PC computer uh, running XP. And uh, what, what, I mean, do you need a lot of, I mean, I have two or three old computers that are kind of outdated as I got a new yeah. one. As long as it'll run XP. Uh, yeah. Uh, you're good. You're good to go. That's cool. Yeah. And what's that box there? That's part of the gecko drive there, right? Well, that is actually what is controlling the torch height control. Oh, uh, that's a that's, separate unit. That's a separate unit. That's available from a company called C and CNC. Uh, oh, out of yeah. Texas. I see that. And yeah. that you need to have that. Now, what's the difference? This is a regular handheld torch. You can take this off right. here and. And use I it do. anywhere. And I do. I'm sure you do. Now, what about the types that are straight up? What's right. the advantage? That's the machine torch. Yeah. And uh, actually, other than it, uh, it takes up much less uh, area to mount it, uh, I see real no benefit. Uh, other than the cord being torch. out of the way. Yes. But I could make this cord, cord out of the way. Yeah, by uh, looping it up here somewhere. Right, exactly. And hooking it onto this. Yes. Oh, that's yes. pretty nice. Um, what else I wanted to ask you? Right, what size, what type of a router do you use on that? Uh, I have got a, a two horsepower variable speed uh, router, and uh, Bosch or um, the wall. It's a Porter cable. Okay, mm -hmm. that seems to me that they have. Uh, did you make your own mount for it? Yes. Okay, because they sell them, but yes, you know us In machinists fact, can uh, make our own, right? <laughs> yeah. Here's Oh yeah, yeah. Here's the here's the mounts for them right there. Two mounts. And two mounts, and I these actually bolt right directly to this back yep. plate here. Yep. And I, I normally mount these on the router first, mm -hmm. and then just bolt these right up to the right. to the back plate there. Right, right, right on those four holes right there. Yep, exactly. Well, I can move that up and down depending on how. Like this comes back to how I how I cheat this particular thing. Right. Is if I need to get the, the router up a little higher, I can move it up. You higher. got bolts, different bolt yeah, space. I see them in there, every inch apart. Yeah, every inch apart, so I can right. I can move the router right. up right. and down. That's pretty nice. Now your capacity to cut is half inch. Yes, and that's a function of the uh, yeah. plasma cutter. If, if I wanted to cut, like I want to cut three quarter, mm -hmm. so I'm thinking I should get a cutter that will do. Um, um, 
one inch. Right. Well, the Hypertherm 45 will do one inch on a sever, which is not a particularly smooth cut. And three quarter, it would probably cut uh, fairly straight, but one half inch and on down will cut excellent. So, so yeah. I really should get something that'll cut thicker than that even. Well, the problem with going above that is the next one up is the, and I would recommend Hypertherm again, uh, is their 60 size. Uh, the problem there is, is you've got to have a 60 amp service to run it. Where the Hypertherm 45, uh, 45 actually will run on a 40 amp service. It's, so it's running off 220, 40 amp. Yes, 220, 40 amp. So once you jump up to the next size up, then your shop's got to have enough power Right, well I have run. that in okay. my shop because I have my welder that runs about 75 amp. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm over 100 amp. I got 100 amp service. Yeah, so uh, yeah, if you want to install uh, mm -hmm. the bigger service. Uh, yeah, well I have it, like mm -hmm. I said. Yeah. And um, well that's uh, really where, you know, where we're going. We're trying to get uh, some ideas. Now I see, like I said, I've seen two inch, I guess this is about two inch tubing. Yes, two inch. And you're good. Tubing, yeah. Good, uh, like. Gee, that's three sixteenths thing. Mm. They're heavy duty. Oh yeah, you, I can't lift this table. Right. It is, uh, well, you've seen them made out of the uh, eighty twenty. What, what, what's yes. your feeling on that? A little bit too. Well, I I'm a believer in heavy. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to machines, yeah. I I believe the heavier it is, the 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 less vibration you're going to have, mm -hmm. the less problems you're going to have. That's true. So uh, this was all made heavy. Yeah, but then again, my thoughts oh, for me. Mm -hmm were to be able to make it portable so I can pick this thing up with my crane mm -hmm. and put it up over my overhead storage mm -hmm. when I'm not using it. Because mm -hmm. it takes, look, yours is what, 48? 44 by 6, yeah. All right, so that would take that much room, that's what I'm going to